Today we're going to look at the drill press and we're going to take a look at some of the parts that make up the drill press. It's really important as you become more advanced in your woodworking that you know more about a machine and what all of its parts can do. The more you know, the more you're able to do with that machine. So today we're going to look at the different features, the different components that make up a drill press so that you're better able to use them in the future when you are doing different assignments in woodshop or when you're at home. The basic elements of a drill press are the head assembly, the column, in the front of the head assembly is the quill. The quill is this piece sticking down that moves up and down. The quill is operated by the feed levers. At the end of the quill is a chuck. The head, at the back of the head is the motor. The motor attaches to the quill up here through some step cone pulleys and some belts. The step cone pulleys and belts are obviously the most dangerous part of a drill press. They are covered by a guard. I'm going to remove the screw here. So an important thing to think about when purchasing a drill press is this guard cover. This particular guard cover is held closed by a screw. It's a tiny little screw that has to be put in here. Every time you want to change the speed, you have to take that screw in and out. It's very likely that at some point you're either going to stop putting it in and out. It's small enough that at some point you may lose it. So you may want to look for a drill press that has a guard that has a latch, a mechanical latch on it so that um, you're, not, you're not messing with a screw every time you want to open and shut this and adjust your speed. The head assembly is connected to a column. Back here in the back is a column. Uh, also connected to the column is the drill press table. On the drill press table is where we're going to do all of our drilling. Most drill presses, like in the case of this one, will have a secondary piece of scrap wood clamped to the surface of the table so that when you drill through your project, you don't drill into the metal table. So here I am underneath the table of the drill press. And there are some really cool things that a drill press can do if you buy the right drill press. So the first thing is this little handle right here. If I loosen this handle, the table will rotate from the left to the right. Pretty cool. If you look back here in the back, this big giant bolt, if I loosen that bolt up, I can tilt the table to 45 degrees. Doubly cool. Now, not all drill presses are going to have this. I'm going to have to choose a drill press that has these features to get that so that I can do my work with it. The column that all of this is attached to comes down to the floor and there's a base on the floor and I'll show you that in a minute. The column in some models has um, some gears on it. This is the column gear rack. And if I loosen up the table, then this model has a height adjustment crank on it. Here's the table height adjustment hand crank on the side of the drill press table. As you can see, if I were to take that hand crank and turn it, the table will either lower or raise depending on which direction I need to turn it. Really nice feature. And then when I get it right where I want it, I go ahead and tighten the table back into place. On the opposite side, of the table opposite from the height adjustment the table height adjustment hand crank is the table locking lever this little lever right here I turn it until I lock that table in the right position with that locking lever locked in that position I cannot get the table to move left or right I also can't get the table to lower or raise up and down.
so the table is now locked, I'm much more likely to get a very precise hole drilled exactly where I want it. So the column is that tube in the back, and the column, as we look at it, we notice that the column is mounted into the base. So most drill presses will have a really large base. The base, as you can see, is often bolted to the floor. And that's what's going to keep the drill from toppling over. So we have the basic structure of the drill press. Now, this handle right here is called the feed lever or feed handle. And this is a critical part of uh, using a drill press. By turning it, the quill is going to raise up and down. And that's going to move the chuck down into your stock with the drill bit or back out. The the feed handle has a unique feature to it and that is that most feed handles allow you to preset the depth that you want the drill to go so I can stop the drill at a certain point so that it cannot go any further um, drills have several ways they do that one is adjustable stop nuts the other is a device like you see here so let me show you how that works all right, on this drill, here's our feed lever. And the feed lever, in the center of the feed lever, is this device right here. This device is going to allow me to set the depth for where I want the drill to stop. This is generally so that the drill will not go all the way through the board. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to turn the feed lever until the drill bit is exactly where I want it. I'm going to turn this little dial back here. It basically has a ruler on it. You see a one inch, two inch, three inch, you see half inch, you see three quarters of an inch, you see eighth inch. I'm going to turn that until it stops turning. Right? When it comes to a stop, I'm going to lock this little knob in the front. Now, the drill will go to that point and stop. I can't get it to go any further. That's going to keep it from drilling through the back of the board. On different brands of drill press, the adjustable stop looks different. This brand is a Powermatic. Right here, you see the two adjust adjustable stop nuts, and you see the feed lever. And if I set those adjustable stop nuts at a certain place on that threaded rod, the drill will only go down so far, and then that's as far as it will go. So that is also that's just a different way to put the same feature the adjustable depth stop feature on a drill on a drill press this little part right here the column that goes up and down is also known as the quill sometimes the feed lever is also known as the quill lever the quill attaches itself to the chuck the quill is what is going to move up and down but it also allows this to spin so there's quite a bit of technology in there the chuck is what is going to hold the drill bit at the bottom of the quill is mounted the chuck it's usually a three jaw chuck the most common is the Jacobs chuck as I turn this one way it opens the jaws allowing me to insert the drill bit when I turn the other direction the jaws will close around the drill bit and grip. Once I get the drill securely in the chuck, then I'm going to need to bring this little tool here, the chuck key, and insert, right? I insert the gears here, up against the gears here. This little pin sticking out goes in that hole, and now by turning it, it is going to lock the drill bit in place. The, one of the most dangerous things about a drill press is this chuck key. If the chuck key gets left in the chuck and the drill gets turned on, that chuck key is going to launch out of the drill at a very high speed and it could perhaps be fatal and hit somebody in the face or in the head and kill them. So a good, one of the major safety rules is that chuck key is never to be left in the chuck. Once you put your hand on the chuck key, you do not take your hand off until you've removed the chuck key from the chuck. 
Some Chuck keys will have this little spring pin as you see here. There's a little spring on the end of that. If I push it in and let go, it's supposed to push it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Once I have started to tighten it and it gets, um, it gets kind of twisted in that hole, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have enough power to push it back out. So I really want to be careful with the chuck key. Another important component that can be used on a drill press is some sort of fixture. This particular fixture is for holding pen blanks, right? Trying to hold little pieces and get them centered is difficult to do. You don't want your hands really close to that spinning drill bit. So I can take a pen blank I can lock it into the fixture and then I can clamp the fixture down onto the drill press and that makes it very safe to drill small things like a pin blank. Now another important piece of drilling using a drill press is being able to clamp work down uh, to the drill press. A, a really important clamp to do that would be a parallel clamp. One of the nice things about a parallel clamp is the length of the jaws. Here's about a six to eight inch length jaw. That's going to reach way out over the top of this table and clamp it down. A small F clamp, sometimes a small C clamp are just not going to be big enough to do the job. Often there's a scrap piece of wood clamped to the tabletop. That can be done with an F clamp or with a C clamp. But if I want to clamp this fixture down to the center of the table, if the fixture, unless the fixture is made really large, or if I have a small piece of wood that needs to be clamped down to the table, I really need a clamp that will reach way out into the tabletop. The best clamp that I know of to reach way out into the table and clamp the piece of stock down is the parallel clamp. Finally, let's take a look at some of the components that have to be used with a drill press. While they are not physically attached to the drill press, the drill press can really do nothing without them. So they aren't extra pieces that you could purchase later. You really need to have all these parts to use a drill press. To start with here in the middle is a drill press vise. When I want to hold small items, a drill press vise is extremely important. It allows me to clamp the piece into the drill press vise, clamp the drill press vise down to the tabletop, and now I'm able to drill holes into small stock without endangering my fingers. A fixture of some kind we talked about earlier allows me to do that. Another component that would also allow for that is a V-block. A V-block is simply a piece of wood with a V cut into it and a V block is primarily used to hold irregular shapes in particular round stock. I put the round stock in the V block, I clamp the whole thing down to the table and now I can safely drill into the round stock and the round stock isn't going to move and the, drill, the hole ends up drilling into the wrong spot. The most common drill bit that we use is the twist bit. Twist bits are generally used for smaller holes, um, but there are some larger twist bits that could be used. This is a Forstner bit. Forstner bits generally start at around a quarter inch to a half inch and move up. So Forstner bits are generally used for making larger holes. A spade bit can also be used on a drill press, but spade bits, as you can see, there is just a single flat piece of metal. They leave a pretty rough hole behind, um, and so they're often used in construction. But if I needed to drill a hole and I wasn't overly concerned with the outcome, what it looked like when it was done, a spade bit will work. Spade bits can drill a little bit deeper. Um, Forstner bits have a limited depth that they can go, as well as twist bits. Most of these could be held with some sort of extension to get them to drill even deeper. The last one here is the hole saw. A hole saw really is limited in its depth. Um, oftentimes a hole saw is used to make, let's say, a tire or a wheel, right? A hole saw is going to put a piece of, is going to put a hole in the center of the piece of wood and then it's going to cut out 
a round circle. So circles are often made using a hole saw and so hole saws come in a variety of sizes. I hope you got a lot of working knowledge today about the drill press. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye and with that knowledge of all the different parts uh, you can be a much more effective woodworker when you use the drill press.